call to order the regular common council meeting, Monday, January 15th, 7 p.m., roll call. Fry? McIntyre? Yes. Candy Davis? Yes. Olson? Here. Walnut? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Confirmation of appropriate meeting notice. The meeting was noticed on Friday, January 12th. Uh, then it was posted at the post office, library, and city hall. Council acceptance of the agenda? Motion for acceptance. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <laughs> public hearing. May I hold a public hearing to hear comments regarding the re modifying the rates for the <coughs> air ride taxi program. <clears throat> a little background or I don't know if there's anybody here that wants to speak on it or not. <laughs> we have, last time we increased rates for the shared ride taxi was 2014. This is at the recommendation of our vendor um, as a way to get costs a little more close to what we've been budgeting. Um, at your place should be a separate piece of paper with a couple of, one clarification and one modification to that legal notice and the information for setting rates. You'll see that Milton service is crossed off on that list that's separate from your packet. And that was, um, this was prepared when there's, there's been a conversation for two years now for Milton to join us in our shared ride taxi program. Um, and so uh, we have talked with, I talked with the administrator, they talked about it at their budget time, but they did not budget for it this year. So while um, that is still something that might happen this year, it will not, there not, will not be a special program where our cab goes to Milton. So we should remove that from our fare list. Then the other thing is the, uh, just a clarification that the extra miles um, outside of the city, it's $2 per mile, not just $2. So you could add those things into the um, rates then um, we would be in a better shape. Okay, we'll officially open the public hearing if there's anyone that wishes to speak on this. And it doesn't look like anybody wants to, Can so I ask we... ask a question? Sure. What does the agency, what does that mean? And then there's a fee there. If they... I'm, I'm going to go on memory now. It's not something that we work with regularly, but they, um, if they take passengers for an agency, a, a county agency typically, then there's a charge that they can charge for that service. For the whole group. It isn't a group. It's, uh, it's still hauling individual passengers, but it's, the passengers are funded through an agency, so there's a fee because there's paperwork, I think, that goes with it. Again, I'm going on memory from mm -hmm. two or three years ago and that became something, but I believe it's um, when someone has funding for a ride through some kind of support agency. Okay. And one other thing, um, who set the original fares? I'm just, the thing I'm trying to get at actually is that I'm wondering, kind of thinking that shouldn't the student fare be the same as the elderly? Or wouldn't it be a good policy maybe to, because, you know, families, if their kids have to get, take a ride with this, you know, a lot of them really probably can't afford to, probably on a limited budget. That's entirely your call. You're the policy makers. <clears throat> um, okay. Otherwise, I think, uh, yeah, it looks good. Okay. Public hearings officially closed, so we'll go to consider modifying the rates for the shared taxi program, shared ride taxi program. Any other discussion on that? Any motions to make something different? Yeah, could we make a motion to um, change the student rate to the same as the elderly and disabled? And, and, and does that include students up through high school? Why, it's all students, yes. I would assume it would include all students. You're making that sure. as a motion? That's your call. <coughs> I'd like to make that as a motion, please. So that motion is to, to raise the one or lower the other? Whatever is decided upon, I think uh, I would like to make a motion that they're the same rate. But what would that rate be, the $2 or the 225 well, since um, the elderly and disabled are currently at $2 and they're going to be raised to 225 I don't think it would be fair to go along with the other raises and raise it 50 cents, so I would like to make that motion for the student rate to be lowered 
or kept at the main, the current level, which would be the new level for the elderly and disabled at three, excuse me, 225. Okay, so the motion is to make it at 225 for the student. Is there a second on that? The, the student is 225. It's to leave it as. To leave it. At 225 and to raise the elderly to 225. Correct. Right. That, okay. Therefore, they'd be at the same rate. No. It's to make the new rate no. at, <laughs> the new rate at 225. For both. So we're just for, for not raising the student. Right. Yeah. Right. We're not going to raise the student. I guess that's what I'm, just, well, I'm just trying to get the student I know, and the elderly I know. in the I'm same. I'm trying to make it simple. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or we but, just, we're yeah. going to raise the other ones, but we're not going to raise the student because yeah. that will then keep that at 225. Yeah, that would keep them in line with the same okay. price as the elderly is my yeah. proposal. So as everybody understands, is there a second <laughs> to do anything with this? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure I knew what I was seconding okay. if I was the second. <laughs> So is there a second? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll second for discussion, I guess. Okay. Looking at the as of 122.18 rates, change the student one to 225. That's the motion. <laughs> to, to, or maintain to, it. Right. To keep it in line with the elderly. Members. Okay. Any more discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call. And this would be on the amendment of the uh, proposed rate change, okay. correct? Right, amendment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I have one more question before we do a roll call. Does this make a difference with um, having to have another public hearing or not? Just because no. we're changing? Okay, thank you. And this is just on this change right here. It's not on the whole contract right now, this motion. Right. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Olson? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Andy Davis? Yes. Walnuts? No. Paul Davis? Yes. Motion passes four to one. And now the original motion to approve the modified rates. Is there any discussion? More discussion on that? Did have a motion, didn't we? No. 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 Oh, okay. No. I'll, I'll make a motion to <laughs> approve the modified rates. Um, I thought we did. I thought we did too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, no, go ahead. I don't I'll think. I'll second it then. No, I don't think. <laughs> Mark. Cindy doesn't have one, so I don't think no. we must not have one. I, I lost. <laughs> I guess not. I, I didn't write it down, but I thought that there was. I'd like to make a motion to approve the modified rates with the exception of the student rate remaining at 225 to keep in line with the elderly and disabled rate. We already did that one. <laughs> well, right. That was it, the But I'm, I said with the exception of that. But there'd be to no To approve the modified that. rates excepting that one change that we just agreed. But we already with. just Sorry. did that. Right. We just did that one. Yes. We already approved it. We already approved that one. He's modified. making a motion to uh, approve the, the ra rates, rates as the rates as, as modified. As a With that one exception. Yeah. Right. As modified, yeah. As modified. As modified. Somebody, <laughs> get, a, somebody get a second this? <laughs> I'll second it. I, yeah. Yes. I'll second it. Any further discussion on this one? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. Andy Davis? Yes. Wellnut? No. Paul Davis? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Motion passes, four to one. Okay. Personal appearances. Anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on anything that's not on the agenda? Okay, we'll move on to the minutes from January 2nd. <laughs> Motion to approve January 2nd, 2018 Council Meeting Minutes. Second. Oops, go ahead, Paul. Any uh, questions or discussion on the bills? Or minutes, I mean? <laughs> Must be a long agenda here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, no discussion on the minutes. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, now we'll go to the committee reports and maybe we'll get to some bills here to pay. <laughs> All 
right. Um, I'm going to make a motion to approve bills and payroll in the amount of two million four hundred eleven thousand six hundred ninety nine dollars and forty one cents. Second. Any questions on the bills? <laughs> Hearing none. Roll call. Well, that's Yes. Andy Davis. Yes. Olson. Yes. Paul Davis. Yes. McIntyre. Yes. Motion passes. There are no licenses, so I'll make a motion to adopt City of Edgerton Resolution 2-18, authorizing a 2017 property tax equivalent charge to the water utility. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Well, Walnuts? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Jackie Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. Motion passes. Make a motion to approve adoption of City of Edgerton Resolution 3-18, approving the assigned fund balance for year ending December 31st, 2017. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Well, next. Yes. Andy Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Motion passes. Make a motion to approve the lowest bid for a new squad car, not to exceed twenty thousand eight hundred ninety-five dollars. Uh, once the discrepancy is um, discovered. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Wellnitz. Yes. Andy Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Motion passes. That's all I have for finance. Thank you. Anything from utility? We, we met last Monday, uh, January 8th, and uh, we didn't do really a lot. We paid some bills and so forth, and but we did uh, got the improvements going for the High Street Marsh Trail for Randy, so we can get the, the rock and the barrier there by the to go <coughs> extend to the high street, high, st high street marsh trail. <laughs> it was kind of a short meeting. That's it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Public Works. Public Works met January eighth last Monday. Um, quite a few items on that agenda. Um, we uh, let's see. The main focus was probably the overnight parking downtown. I have it here. Oh, Thank you, though. Um, overnight parking downtown where we had sort of come back to look at what we had allowed from, say, Orens up to West Fulton Street and Sarah's up to West Fulton Street where <coughs> basically those are going to remain um, restricted parking whereas any other direction um, we're going to go down and have those be um, 24-hour parking. Bottom line is we originally had opened up about 77 spots, but after this motion, we still are gaining about 50 from what we had in previous times. So we did a little backtracking on it, but we still end up with more parking spots. Um, let's see. Uh, we also um, had heard from a resident up on, um, I think, West Fulton Street regarding tree damage um, to his sidewalk and um, basically we concluded that a lot, of, a lot of the squares are are caused by tree damage, so we really took no action on that, and also looked at some parking in front of Mario's and the Red Baron. Uh, there was some discussion about eliminating those, at least for the regular or all vehicles, possibly moving the one in the Red Baron, um, moving removing that and moving the um, the handicap back one. Uh, some discussion arose from that. It looked like we we're going to need some um, some further looks at it, so we sort of tabled that. And then we uh, just did some discussion about the generator. Got a report from um, a gentleman from I forgot what company. He's Carol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so we heard some discussion on that, and that was about it. All right. Thank you. Anything from personnel? Uh, personnel met on January 11th, and we will be handling items in closed session. Good, thank you. Public safety, which met tonight. 
Oh yeah, we uh, <laughs> approved the, uh, we went through the uh, uh, finance report to accept that bid for the squad car no higher than what we approved on 21043. Okay, thanks again. Next item is to consider development agreement between the city and Dan Reinhardt for property on Artisan Drive. A motion to approve development agreement between the city and Dan Reinhardt for property on Artesian Drive. I'll second that. <coughs> Any discussion? Oh, does that come along there, Dan? What did I say? Artesian? It's that beer. Yeah. It's for the expansion of both the existing tax supply company as well as uh, bringing the Starfish Company up from San Antonio. Yeah, that's a new adventure for you there. I hope yeah. that was good, you know. It's going to keep me busy this year. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, it looks good to see the big buildings out there. and kind of nice. They, they look good. Yeah, it's good to see it coming together. You bet. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Roll call. Andy Davis? Yes. Walnuts? Yes. Paul Davis? Yes. McIntyre? Yes. Yes. Sounds like the motion passed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Got dark out in the hallway. Ah. Okay, motion passed. Thanks again and Thanks, Sam. Anybody wants to come out? Good. Next item is to consider process to select new prosecuting attorney. Page seven of your packet is a brief staff report regarding um, the resignation of the Rothy Law Firm as a prosecuting attorney because of Dale Pope's um, announcement to run for a municipal judge. There's a conflict there. So the question for you is how should we select the next prosecuting attorney? Uh, we did RFPs in 2014. You may recall the, the prices for prosecuting. We were sending an RFP out for both services at that time. Mm -hmm. So the prosecuting attorney um, prices were really all over the map. So I'm not, given how old they are and given how, I, you know, they weren't, we weren't really clear, I think, on what we had. Um, we have a much better contract now, I think, when we send out, if we do an RFP, that we'll get better comparable numbers. So the question for you is how do you wish to select the next prosecuting attorney um, if you want to do a, a proposal process? Um, that's what staff thinks at this point we probably should do. I think we should too. Yeah. And the towns, just as an aside, uh, the last time, uh, it, I, just because we never thought of it, the contract was always just between us and the prosecuting attorney we selected, and that's the way it could be again this time, but we did speak with the towns, and they are interested in participating in the process because in the past they have also entered into a side agreement with uh, the prosecuting attorney we selected, and we think there's some savings by having one attorney and not three attorneys attend court. Oh. Um, so uh, we'd like to work with the towns if we can, and um, so far the, the town of Fulton has kind of decided how they wanted to be involved, and Albion will be deciding at their next meeting. So I think this gives us an opportunity to work with them, and that's all good, too. Yeah. So does that mean that when we go through the RFPs that they may be here for that meeting to go through them too, or yeah. how would that work? Good question. One, the, I, I kind of asked for their interest in setting up a joint committee to do a right. review, and Fulton said they didn't think that that was necessary, but they did want to see the proposals okay. and evaluate them from their perspective, and they still would like to have separate contracts, but if we can gain better information by them joining in the proposal process, then they'll just have better information when making their decision. Good. Awesome. Yeah, that good. So do you need a motion for this or just the direction? Um, just direction. Direction's fine okay. if everyone's kind of on the same page that we'll send out those proposals once we know where, how the towns want to participate. Good. Mm -hmm. so how does that exactly work? Do you just put, put it in the paper and then they can tap into all the law firms we want? Or do we usually see? send out to any, any firms that we can that think that might be interested. So we would put an ad in, but we would more importantly send out the notice to firms that have expressed interest in the past. Everybody good with that? Yep, sounds good. Next item is Mayor, all the person in the staff reports. I don't have anything, if anybody else has anything. What is that trivia? 
Is it Red oh. doing it this year? 27th. It? Yeah, it's 27th. Uh, I, we have no connection to it this year, as far as I know. But, well, uh, you know, last year, the, the day before the trivia, they asked them to MC it. But, yeah. So who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> but it's the 27th. Thanks. Yeah. He might be able to play for the first time in <laughs> 30 years. Nah, they'll, they'll have him doing it. What? They'll have him doing it. <laughs> Probably the day before. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to go into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or ex exercises responsibility. Discuss and consider WPPA negotiations and consider going into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851E, deliberating or ne negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or, competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. Discuss and consider TIF 8, Economic Incentive for Nelson Trust. I'll second. Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, roll call. Wellnitz? Yes. Andy Davis? Yes. Olson? Yes. Paul Davis?